Good afternoon. I hope that y'all are having a great week. A few weeks ago, I started watching a new TV show on HGTV called Lakefront Empire. The show follows several realtors who are selling property around the Lake of the Ozarks. And as I'm watching the show, a flood of emotions and memories come running back into my mind. I spent many childhood weeks on that lake since my grandparents had a lake house. I can remember bass fishing, the fishing competitions with my brother that my grandfather used to set up. We used to try to see who could catch the smallest fish and he usually did things like this to keep us out of trouble. The afternoon canoeing trips into the middle of the code, swimming, uh, family boating trips around the lake, especially to the dam area, feeding the ducks, um, eating the, my grandmother's catfish, and, um, and in the evening playing Old Maid. The house was in, was in a peaceful, quiet area, which brought such joy in my childhood memories. Later, after my grandfather had passed and the house had, to be, um, had been sold, I wanted to see the house one more time. So my mom and I decided to take a road trip to the house. I vaguely remember how to get there, but my mom guided me to the area. And as we approached, there had been several other houses that had been built. And I began questioning, was this even the home that was my, from my memory? Um, it was just a shell of how my grandfather used to keep the house. It was overgrown with shrubs, grass, weeds. Plus it looked very unkept and almost abandoned. How just a few years can change things. Now, as the show that I've been watching travels around the area, I see the beautiful lake, but oh, how the things have changed totally. House upon house, traffic, restaurants, crowds. Isn't that funny how our perception versus the reality really occurs? I wanted to treasure those sweet memories. Don't you know this is how the disciples must have felt? This group of misfit men received a special calling from Jesus, which they watched, they walked, they traveled, they lived, they experienced for three years with Jesus during his earthly ministry. These men were not of noble background and none of them had religious clout. At least four of them were fishermen. Simon was a zealot, part of a political group that sought to overthrow the Roman government. Matthew worked for a Roman government as a tax collector and would have been viewed essentially as a traitor to the Israelites. Judas eventually betrayed Jesus. But after Jesus' death, these disciples had 10 days in the upper room to pray, reflect, and share their own personal memories while waiting for the Holy Spirit. Can't you see them thinking back on those times and experiences with Jesus? But now these days gave them a new understanding. In John 12, 16, at first Jesus' disciples didn't know these, uh, what these prophecies meant. However, when Jesus was glorified, the disciples remembered that these prophecies had been written about Him. The disciples remembered that they had taken part in fulfilling the prophecies. Carrie Shook said this, Imagine the joy that must have flooded their souls as they remember the times that they shared with Jesus. They had taken part in fulfilling the prophecies of Christ. These powerful memories overshadowed their own individual failures, regrets, and sorrows. Well, we know that the Holy Spirit helped these men begin to write the stories. For example, can you imagine Peter? He was the only one who's ever walked on water. Or Thomas touching Jesus' hands after he had been nailed on the cross. Or maybe John taking his last breath. Or maybe they, the disciples watching Judas betray Jesus or maybe the 5,000, the feeding of the 5,000, or all the miracles in the, that they experienced. We can go on all the, about all of these events that occur, but they lay the foundation for our church today. Imagine if these disciples were alive today, they would be all saying, look, our lives are being played out on that TV screen or that movie theater. I can't believe that they're depicting me this way. Or, I don't remember the story occurring exactly like that, but yet, the scriptures we read 2,000 years later is an active story filled with honorable memories of these eyewitnesses. What a legacy that they left for us to experience from one simple calling from Jesus to follow me. Even though the Ozarks scene on the Lakefront Empire is not the same as I remember, I'm so thankful for the legacy that my grandparents allowed me to experience, but blessed to be allowed to follow the calling of Jesus. Oh, what a story. 
let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for today. And Lord, we just thank you for the memories and the stories that you um, are creating on our hearts and we have the opportunity to follow you. And Lord, we just um, pray now that you would grow us in our faith so that we can follow you just like the disciples did. And Lord, that you can um, allow us to grow closer to you in all that we do today. We lift all this up in your name we pray, amen.